My name is Johan Oldenkamp, and in this lecture, I will present the foundation for a new scientific paradigm. This lecture contains seven parts. In part one, I will start with Plato from ancient Greece. And in part seven, I will integrate all previous parts into what I call holy science. Holy science combines the findings from modern science and the wisdom from ancient science. Everything I'm going to present is also written down in this free online ebook. You can find it on pateo.nl. In this first part, I will re examine the work of Plato. Plato lived 400 BC in what we now call Greece. His most famous legacy is the allegory of the caves. Plato explained that our reality seems real, but is in fact a shadow. They're all shadows projected from something else. In my explanation, this allegory means that there are three different worlds, three rings of the world. The outer ring, the third ring, contains the shadows. They seem very real to us, but they are not real by itself. They are projected by something else. They are projected by the movement in the second world. Yeah, we see objects that are holed up and they project the shadows on the wall. They cast to the wall. And if there were no fire, we could not see the shadows. So there are three worlds. The shadow world is the world of matter, the world of manifestation. All seems real to us, but it's not real. They are projected by energy, flows of energy, energies that are always moving. Movement. And it comes from the first world, the world of the source, which has meaning. In this series of lectures, I'm going to explain how I think Plato tried to explain how the world of us is. Let us start with energy. In fact, we really do not know what energy is, because we can only see the shadows of energy. These shadows move always in a sine wave. The height of this wave, the amplitude, is an expression of the amount of energy present in the wave. And the wavelength is a presentation of the speed of energy. Heraclitus, another famous Greek scientist, said pantarei, which means everything flows. And that is because all energies are always flowing. Energy can never stop. And because energies are always flowing, matter seems to move all the time. Here again we see the sine wave. Horizontally is what we call time. That's how we experience the movement. And the other direction we could call it space. But space is not a one directional uh, object, one di directional concept to us. Here we see space in two directions. And now we see that the movement has become a circle. You could say time moves like a circle. But also orbits around the planets a uh, circle, or the planets itself orbit around the sun, also a circle. And electrons around the core of an atom, also circles. But time, I mean space, has three directions, height, length, and depth. And then we see, when we take all three directions, that every circle becomes a spiral. All movement in nature is a spiral-like movement. Mostly 3D, people say three dimensions, but in fact there are only three directions. Because space itself is just one dimension. The other dimension is time. And there is a third dimension. I explain in my book. Here we see two waves. The second wave, the upper wave, is twice as fast as the lower wave. When we put them together, we see that they have three mutual points at the beginning, in the middle, and in the end. They go at the same moment through the null point, or the zero point. And because of that, they are harmonics. They have an harmonic relation. And this harmonic relation is called an octave, meaning that the second is twice as fast as the first. Here we see another harmonic relation. The upper one is going three times as fast as the up lower one going twice. So it's a relation of two versus three. And again we see three mutual points, at the beginning, halfway, and in the end. And this is called the quint. 
third harmonic relation we see here. In the time, the lower and the slower vibration needs to complete three cycles, the faster one completes four. And again, they have three zero points, three shared zero points. And this harmonic relation is called a quart. In fact, these three points are what we call matter. Matter doesn't really exist. They are just yeah, mutual points through the uh, mutual uh, passing by through the zero points. So matter is just an illusion. Matter is just like a Russian doll. Every time we open this doll, we find a smaller doll. And then we open it again and find an even smaller one. And it can go on until infinity. We found molecules, and in molecules we found atoms. Atom means indivis in individable, but we could divide it even further into electrons and protons and neutrons. And even that could be divided further, and so on. Physics has all kinds of forces invented to describe the whole dynamics on each level, including special particles needed to make the formulas work. To me, this is not science. To me, this is science fiction, because all these particles are fictionous. They are not real. They are shadows on a wall. 